so as Jeff said, I'm the director of International Summits, and uh, I get to go to these summits all over the world and listen to all of our amazing speakers from SU and from and uh, regionally. And two words that we use a lot, we use a lot of buzzwords, exponential, disruption, innovation, Moore's Law, and you're gonna keep hearing these words, but the two words I want to focus on are innovation and disruption. So innovation is defined as, simply as a new idea, device, or method. Simple enough. Disruption, to prevent something, especially a system, process, or event, from continuing as usual or as expected. So because we keep using these two words over and over and over again, I wanted to focus in on what their meaning is and how we are using that meaning here um, at the summit for the next two days. What, what, in what context? Let's really focus in because you're going to hear this word probably a thousand times over the next two days. And I see it like this. Innovation is doing the same thing, but a little bit better. You're just kind of making something a little better, and a little better, and a little better. Disruption is making things that make the old things totally obsolete. Before I was at SU, I actually worked for Peter Thiel, um, the founder of PayPal and the first investor in Facebook, so many of you may know him. He wrote this book called Zero to One. I was actually working for him when he was writing this book, so I learned a lot about uh, innovation and disruption. And really, I highly recommend the book. He is a Trump supporter, so I, you know, I have to <laughs> somehow reconcile that. But he is absolutely a very interesting and amazing person as well. And, uh, and so, Literally, the title of this book is Innovation to Disruption. Zero, you can stay at zero for as long, you can stay at zero for the rest of your life. It's leaping to number one. It's leaping to number one. That is what disruption is. So, but the title of my talk is The Art of Innovation and Disruption. And before I was at SU and before I was with Peter Thiel, I was actually a fine arts painter for 10 years. I, I was a professor at San Francisco Art Institute. I taught painting and drawing. I uh, exhibited my work around the world. This is what I did before I pivoted into Silicon Valley. And that's a whole other story. And uh, you, know, you can stop me in the hallway and ask me how that happened. Um, and I was recently at a lecture by a uh, fine arts painter, Sadie Valera, and she was talking about disruption and innovation uh, in the context of art history, but never really using those words. And it got me to thinking, I live in these two worlds, and yet they're kind of coming together. And so I want to talk about these two words and their concepts through art history, something that we all know. So I'm gonna need some uh, audience participation here. Who knows this artist or the name of the painting? Exactly. Raise your hand if you knew this. All right, so majority of you, good. Yes, yeah, Starry Night by Vincent van Gogh. What about this one? It's easy, that he signed it in the corner. Right, exactly. Okay. One, two for two. Next. Who's this? Anyone? Okay, let's go to the next one. Who's this? Nope. These two painters, one is Solomon J. Solomon. Why would you give the first name, also the last name, I, I don't know. And uh, William Adolf Bouguereau. These two painters were the most famous painters at the eight, late 1800s, early 1900s. Absolutely the most famous painters on the, in the West, I should say. Uh, Solomon, he was actually the president of the Royal Society for British Artists and a founding member of the New English Art Club. That's like being the president of... I don't even know, you know, it's like, it's like the highest honor you could have as a painter. Uh, it's like getting the Nobel Prize, honestly, in painting. 
and being an artist. And Bouguereau, he was very popular in France and the United States, and he was given numerous um, awards. And the Impressionists, Monet, Van Gogh, and their colleagues, could not stand these guys, okay? And they were not popular. The Impressionists were not popular. These painters were working for the system. They, uh, they're, they're, uh, um, they got, they were, it, it took years to get them to do some kind of a painting for either a church or a client or whatever, but they're in the system. Impressionists concentrated on how light and color were perceived by the artist himself. So they're they were expressing their own feelings in their work. Van Gogh deliberately used colors to capture his mood rather than using colors realistically. No other artist was doing this at, at the time. This was absolutely revolutionary. I know we're used to seeing these images on coffee mugs now, right, and posters. But at the time, this was revolutionary. This is my favorite painting um, by Van Gogh, and I can go into why a little later, but I love this quote that he wrote, instead of trying to reproduce exactly what I see before me, I make more arbitrary use of color to express myself more forcefully. It's almost like zero to one right here in this quote. Solomon, he was an innovator. You can actually look and see what he was looking at and trying to make better. The painting on, the, on, on your right uh, is done by Van Dyck in the 17th century. Same concept, Samson and Delilah. And these paintings are life-size. These figures are life-size, okay? And on an aside note, Solomon painted this painting when he was 27 years old. Can you imagine being able to paint something like that at 27? I mean, that's incredible. But you see exactly what he was looking at. He's looking at Van Dyck and thinking, I can do it better. I'm going to try to do it better. But he's still staying at zero. The disruptors were Van Gogh and the Impressionists, Van Gogh and Monet. They weren't just trying to make something better. They were replacing it with something better. So as I'm listening to this lecture and kind of putting all these pieces together for myself and, and wanting to share that with you, and the reason I'm sharing it with you is because we seem to use a lot of these buzzwords only in business, only when we discuss AI, you know, disruption. We, we talk about blockchain and we talk about AI and we talk about all of these concepts in a very narrow viewpoint, and I want to make sure that you think about these words not only for work, but for your life. Like Jeffrey said, open mind, mindset is incredibly important. So listening to these, uh, this lecture kind of had me move forward to two other words, legacy and motivation, or maybe I should say motivation and legacy. What will I leave behind? What will you leave behind? What will you be remembered for? These are really important questions. And I want you to think about these questions over the next two days. And think about why it's so difficult to change our mindset. Why? Why is it so difficult? And my answer and many people's answer at SU when we have this conversation is fear. I'm glad to meet what you. What is this thing? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Goo Goo. Hey, you're okay. There's something from the last You have to say, hey, Google, or okay. Hey, Goo Goo. Okay, Goo Goo. What's the weather? Yeah. What's what? the weather, ask? What the weather? He want to know what is the weather. Tomorrow. <laughs> Tomorrow. In Flagler Beach tomorrow, there will be showers with a high of 65 and a low of 56. With this, I don't wish to be Watch it, man. I'm scared. I'm scared. It's a mystery. Oh my gosh. No. <laughs> right? This woman, okay, 
I kind of did a little bit of research on her, but this woman grew up in southern Italy. She lived through, as a child, World War II. She immigrated to the United States. She, you know, kind of lived the American dream, had her family, now lives in Florida. And this is freaking her out, okay? Totally freaking her out. And late, the, the video is a little longer. You can look on YouTube. And later she keeps asking, there's a woman in there. There's a woman in there. Like, she can't comprehend that this little white box is actually answering her questions. There, it must be connected to a phone line or something like that. She can't even comprehend that. And then you have this. This is actually my son, Oliver, a few years back. And... I noticed him, you know, looking like a little man on the couch with, uh, t he took his dad's Blackberry. I'm like, oh, cute, and I took a picture of him. And then I went and looked, and he had actually unlocked the Blackberry, found a game, and was playing it correctly. What is that? Our future is never going to look like our past. That's what that is. This is our, this is our present, okay? This is where we live. This is... This is, this sucks, but this is where we live right now, okay? <laughs> and we really, really need to make a decision as a community. Are we going to embrace fear and this because it's something we know? Or are we going to come together and actually build a future that we want to see? Our mindset and systems must adapt to allow for a future of abundance. That, 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 that's it. We have to, right? We absolutely have to. But it is scary. We hear words like AI, blockchain, future of our jobs, future of our jobs. How many times, you know, this, this is probably on everyone's top, tip of their tongue, future of our jobs. What is going to happen? Our future looks nothing like our past. I hope what you take away for the next two days is the absolute urgency that you must come together to build a positive future. I love this quote by Astro Teller, captain of uh, Moonshots. You saw him kind of in the video, uh, the opening video. In a constant state of destabilization, the new kind of stability has to be dynamic stability. Like riding a bicycle, humanity has to learn to exist in this state. We have to learn how to exist in this state. We have to learn to live in this state of not knowing. I wish I could give you a manual, an exponential manual. I know that Jeff already kind of warned you that there is no such thing, but wouldn't that be awesome if we could just <laughs> write something up, Yellow Brick Road, you get to Emerald City, and there's you know, exponential future right there in front of us. I wish. But something I can give you is community. And by being here today, you are part of the SU community. Just by being here, you're part of us now. We got you, okay? We've tagged you and we've got you. You're in, okay? Seriously, you're in. So what is SU? You kind of know what we've been doing here at the summit, but SU, we are a global community using exponential technologies to tackle the world's biggest challenges and build an abundant future for all. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's a mouthful, right? <laughs> SU is uniquely at the intersection of technology, impact, and business. And ultimately our mission is to positively impact a billion people in the next decade. That's a, that's a lot of people, right? So going back to the idea of motivation, what is your motivation? Here's my motivation. These are my three boys. They're actually a little older now, but I love this picture because it completely represents their personalities. And I think about why I wake up in the morning, what I do, why I do it, and what I want to leave behind. And going back to what I was talking about before, the disruptors and, and why I talked about art history and, brought the, and, I, and the reason I was talking about that is disruptors are remembered. The innovators are not remembered. 
It's the disruptors who are remembered. And I'm not saying in the world, I'm not saying it has to be that everyone in an audience of 900 people is going to remember my name. It could be my family, my community, my church, but it's the disruptors who are remembered. What is your legacy going to be? Think about your motivation and legacy when you listen to all of these amazing, amazing speakers coming up. I actually have one of the best jobs in the world, literally. I get to travel the world and do this and meet all of you, have conversations, and work with totally awesome partners. And the bottom left, or yeah, your left, is Lloyd, uh, who I've been working with for the last year to bring this summit here to Thailand. And Here's a picture of all of the summit partners around the world. We do come together twice a year and we support each other at each other's summits. This is, this is my tribe. This is my community. This is who I talk to when I'm trying to figure it out. And I want you all to talk, network, connect. There are... 14 international summits this year. We're looking to do 20 next year. Definitely one in Thailand once again, for sure. And that means we're educating over 25,000 people around the world. So we're getting closer to that billion. Not fast enough for me, but we're getting close. I still have, I still have some time. We have a global, th these are numbers are totally outdated. So we have a global alumni, I think closer to 30, 40,000, yeah. So we're, we're, we're working on it. You are now part of that community. You are now part of that community. The best way to tap into that community is to go to our website, su.org, download the app, and build a profile. This is how you are going to be able to connect to those other 40,000 people who have gone to a summit or been through a program and who know how important it is to change your mindset. If you have a business or a vacation, you're going to Nigeria, you can literally go on the app, find someone that lives there, and let's say you're in banking, they're in banking, and you guys go have lunch, and then all of a sudden you start having a conversation about the changes that you're making in your offices. They talk about the changes that they're making, and you come together and you actually solve a problem. These problems are not going to solve themselves, and these challenges are not going to go away. Our future looks nothing like our past. And a warning, when you, after the next two days, you're gonna be all jazzed up, you're gonna be like, I'm gonna change the world. We've actually had people who have like quit their jobs and started another career path, and it was pretty amazing. Uh, everyone, please do not do that. Uh, but you're going to go to work and you're going to talk to your colleagues, you're going to talk to your family, you're going to talk to your friends, and you're going to be talking about, I have this abundant mindset and it's, you know, this is amazing and we can make changes. And they're going to tell you you're crazy. Okay, they're going to be like, what, what, what happened to you? What, did you, what Kool-Aid did you drink? Don't, don't let people bring you down. S keep that motivation. Keep that motivation. Be the rhino on the tightrope. Remember that. Let's, let's just all say it. Be the rhino on the tightrope. Yes. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I hope you all have a wonderful two days. I'm very excited to talk to you all. Think about these words, innovation and disruption, motivation and legacy, while you listen to all of these talks. Thank you very much. Have a great day.